so many ways to increase the aesthetic quality of a video, but this is going to be one of the most satisfying ones. Anyway, so here's something else visually pleasing. Uh, the Falke from Landsknecht Emporium. I've given you a first impression a while ago, and this is the full review after having tested it. Doesn't make that movie shing sound because it is wooden leather. The good old war knife or big knife or long knife as it's translated from German. Uh, these were particularly popular in the late Middle Ages and Renaissance. I'm not going to go into full historical background because I've made an entire video about the Messer. I'm going to link it down below if you haven't seen it yet. So let's take a closer look at this reproduction here. Landsknecht Emporium operates out of a workshop in Hungary and they hand ground this blade out of 6150 spring steel, which is known for excellent toughness and resistance to wear, shock and abrasion. Just overall high quality steel, great for making swords. And the design is based on a woodcut print from 1530, right here. It's remarkably light, only 1.14 kilograms or two and a half pounds. And it has a distal taper from five and a half millimeters to two and a half millimeters, which is from just under a quarter inch to about an eighth of an inch. So the balance is quite close to the hilt, as you can see. And so that makes this a bastard sword, basically. Like this can function perfectly well as a single-handed sword. In fact, it is extremely fast, even with one hand. And uh, with this long handle, of course, you have the option to use it with both hands as well. It's hard to convey how it feels. I can only just give you an impression and you know, just a little wrist power flick cuts like this and you know changing direction with two hands of course even more so. The handle is hardwood covered in leather. It's a hidden tang design meaning that the handle scales meet in the middle here to cover the sides and uh, it's pinned. You cannot see the pins because the leather is on top of it. And uh, by the way, this, the way they finished the leather right here, the seam, is great. They properly sealed it. So this is, looks like it's very durable and it's also comfortable. This doesn't rub on the hand. You barely even notice it's there. The side guard, the nagel or nail guard, is pinned through the cross guard and then pinned, as you can see right here. The benefit of that is that this is an extra point of contact for securing the guard. Like you can press fit it, you know, make the opening in the guard as tight as possible and then force it on. The grip, of course, also contributes to holding it in place and there's this as well. So I can't imagine a cross guard loosening up. Everything seems nice and tight overall. We'll get back to that in a moment. And on the grip here you've got this groove in the center if you want to call it a fuller for a grip that is very characteristic of the Kriegsmesser and it makes it more comfortable overall and whenever you, you wrap your hands around it your fingertips tend to rest in that groove and uh, feels quite good overall what I found weird at first is how wide it is in relation to the thickness. You can see it's it's quite a thin handle and this is very wide. Now this is an earlier version. From what I understand the current model is slightly narrower in profile so that should be more comfortable. But um, once I got used to this I don't mind it really anymore because this allows you really good edge alignment, you know, very good control over it because you feel it very easily. The handling overall is amazing, as I said, be it with one hand or two, you've got so much control over it. It's such an, a lively and agile blade. There's a bit of file work on the ends of the cross guard. Just a very slight, subtle touch. 
but looks nice. I also like the grooves in the Nago. Just makes it visually more interesting. And to show you the fit, there's really no gap worth mentioning. Very tight fit, professionally done. So far, so good. What about the cutting performance? This reminded me again of why I've become skeptical of the paper test, uh, when it comes to swords at least. With knives, it's perfectly fine. Uh, speaking of which, this scabbard has two knives in it. Those are quite sharp. I did the paper test with those and no issue at all. The sword blade failed the paper test, but it doesn't matter because it cuts remarkably well. So I tried the customary water bottles and the Tommy mats, absolutely no problem. Easy to achieve clean cuts with it. As long as your edge alignment is at least passable, it has absolutely no trouble going through. And that is really because of the overall blade geometry. So the spine isn't exceptionally thick, particularly as it tapers toward the point. And the blade is, has a decent width. You know, it's not as wide as the Knecht all throughout. It has a significant profile taper as well, but there's still plenty of width to thin it down. Feels very sharp, actually. Really, anything you do with it, like if you check by hand, if you cut tatami or whatever, everything tells you that this is a sharp blade, just the paper test lies to you. So it really doesn't matter that much for a sword. So this is awesome. Really nice cutter, you know, also comfortable. But even with cuts that had suboptimal edge alignment, no problem. Then I went on to do the abusive testing. In fact, I had to do it first for logistical reasons. And uh, so this, the Tommy performance was after I chopped into wood with it. So I started light with some moderate branches. Obviously no problem, that's to be expected. And uh, cut nicely. Then I gradually worked my way up, you know, went toward thicker limbs, so on and so forth. No hand shock here. For lighter targets like that, the weight and balance is perfect. You do want a lighter, well-balanced sword for that purpose. Uh, heavier chopping, you know, hacking into large limbs or even smaller dead trees, etc. That's a different story. For that, a heavier blade is useful. But for the durability test, this performed admirably. So, as I said, I kept ramping it up. Eventually, I was chopping pretty hard into thick pieces of wood. This is where you can run into trouble. It's superfluous to say don't do this at home, right? Oh, it's the internet. I almost forgot. Yeah, don't do this at home, all right? No damage. Time to crank up the power. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think that's enough. It's still flawless. And one more. Everything's still rock solid. No edge damage. Blade is still straight. Perfect. This is in perfect light right now. I have a really good look at this and there is nothing. There is a bit of reflection on the edge, which um, 
you know, fits with the, the paper test. So if I were to just rehone this a little bit, just to straighten out the burr that rolled over or to lightly touch up areas that rounded over a little bit, this would be paper cutting sharp. But again, it doesn't even need to be. Here's a little trick for transport. I have to cram this into my camping backpack and I have to do it handle down. So if you have a belt on your scabbard, you can loop it around the guard, like that, come around, loop again, and then just do a couple of passes and thread the end of the belt through and just pull it taut. And there you go, the leather sticks to itself and so now it doesn't come out. So how does it stack up against my personal gold standard, so to speak, the Albion Knecht? Well, it's a worthy competitor, that's for sure. I still prefer the Knecht. Uh, sorry guys, you did great work, there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's just, the Knecht just wins on handle design just a little bit. Like, this one is good, it's great in fact, and particularly considering that the newer version is narrower, so nothing wrong with that, but the way the handle of the Knecht feels in my hands is just, just a little nicer, you know? As far as cutting performance is concerned, I haven't compared them side by side, but I would think they're probably fairly similar. Now the Knecht is going to have a little bit more cutting power because it has more mass overall. It has a longer blade and a wider blade. So there's just going to be a little bit more heft. It's not going to be as fast as this, obviously. What about the price? Well, this is cheaper, 867 euros. Uh, I understand that's without tax. That's 1,282 Canadian dollars and 1,050 US dollars. So that is also a significant chunk of money to put down on a sword, of course. Is it worth it? Depends on who you ask. Uh, I would say yes. For the quality, you know, if you're a dedicated collector and you want something that performs very well, absolutely, this is great. Also, you really don't have that many options on the market. You know, Messers, particularly Kriegsmesser, um, Albion's Knecht was sold out for a while. I think they brought it back. These here are more readily available and they have a few other uh, models as well. So just based on the quality, I have no problem at all recommending Landsknecht Emporium. By the way, this video is not sponsored. If it was, I tell you. This was sent to me for free for review, but I have no monetary incentive to talk more highly of it than I feel. And uh, yeah, easy to recommend for sure. The price, that, that's the only problem. As usual with high-end reproductions, they are expensive. That's just, it is how it is. And I don't know enough about the industry behind the scenes, so to speak. I don't know what their costs involved are. So what I can say about the value for money is limited. You know, I can compare it to other sorts on the market. In that sense, it compares favorably. Also, the scabbard is included in the price. And uh, well-made scabbards typically cost several hundred dollars. There's a bit of rattle, like it's not 100% you know, tight fit. So it could be a little better, but it works. You know, the, uh, the strap is well done and that's about it. I like it a lot. If you're interested, I'll leave the link down below, of course. I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and have a good one, folks. You see, people, you're not dealing with the average video anymore. This is a super background. Shitty joke, isn't it? I'll skip it. Fine. Seriously, mother mosquitoes. Are you serious right now? <sighs> Officially nowhere is safe anymore. I have the belief that in coastal areas, right at the water, with you know the fresh breeze, the salt water and everything, there weren't any mosquitoes. Yeah.
nowhere is safe. They're everywhere at this point.